Our application is representing the same information, so this list of charging stations, in two different ways. We've got just a plain list view, and then if I press this icon in the bottom right, we can see we can also represent that data on a map. However, when I go ahead and press this button, it's pushing new navigation scenes onto our stack. And that's not really what we want because that's going to go ahead and ruin our navigation state. So if I press back, rather than going back to the actual screen that allows us to find locations near us, we need to go back multiple times through each one of our scene transitions. And to get over that, we just need to replace the screen rather than push a new screen onto the stack. And to do that in React Navigation, what we want to do is override the get state for action within the stack navigator. And that's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is know which stack navigator we're working with. So in this case, we're using the home stack. And the first thing we want to do is actually copy the previous get state for action from the existing router. So we want to say home stack dot router dot get state for action. Now we can go ahead and actually start overriding our home stack router. So we can say home stack dot router is equal to a new object. And then we're going to use everything that currently exists in the router, but we are going to override our get state for action. And this get state for action function takes two parameters. The first is going to be action. The second is going to be state. And then we want to make sure we return the previous get state for action and pass those two parameters to it. So with the boilerplate out of the way, now we can actually go ahead and start writing our new custom action handler. And to do that inside of this get state for action function, we want to first check if the state exists. And if it does, then we want to say action.type. And the, the type is what we're going to specify how we should actually handle that action. So in this case, the new action we're creating is going to be called replace current screen. And when we're replacing the current screen, we're going to be overriding the routes array. So rather than pushing a new route onto this array, we want to replace the current screen, which in this case is going to be the last screen on the stack. And that means we want to say state.routes.slice. And we're going to take everything from the beginning of the array to the end of the array, not including the current route. With that completed, we'll have a routes array that's shorter than the current routes. And at this point, we want to go ahead and actually create, or we want to push the new screen, which is going to be represented by the action we're passing to it, onto this stack. And since this routes array is one shorter than what's currently represented in our application, when we push this new screen onto it, it's going to be representing the current screen that the user's on. So now we want to go ahead and actually update the state to use this. So the first thing we're going to do is just pass all of the existing state to it. Then we want to pass our new routes array to it. And finally, we want to make sure we specify exactly which index the stack navigator should currently be on. So we want to say routes.length minus one. So we've got our new get state for action set up. We know we've got this new type of replace current screen. So now we need to go ahead and actually call this replace current screen rather than our navigate function within the screens that when we press this button where these actions are actually being emitted from. So I'll go to this near me.js file and inside of this replace screen function we can see we've got this this.props.navigation.navigate. We specify which screen we're passing and then we're specifying what prop should be passed to that next screen. And our API is based very much off of what navigate uses so we'll just keep that there as a reference point. And rather than saying this.props.navigation.navigate, we're going to say navigation.dispatch. And that allows us to specify the type of the action that we want to dispatch. And we know from our get state for action handler, that's going to be replace current screen. The next thing we want to do is actually specify the route name. And the next route we're going to is going to be this near me map. We also want to specify the params that we pass to the next screen. That's going to be locations and position. And finally, we want to specify a key. And typically, this key would be completely unique. But since we're replacing the current key, the likelihood of a collision between keys is relatively low. So I'm just going to create a static one. And we're just going to say near me map. So with that completed, and I save this, we go back to this. And if I pl press the map button down here in the bottom, you can see that we've switched, switched screens, but when I press this back arrow, it's bringing us back to the home screen. Now we're not quite done because when we press this map button and then I pre press the list button, 
it's adding that stack. So we need to go ahead and actually take this new logic and bring it to our near me map file. And again, we'll just replace this navigation.navigate. .navigate. And this time we can just copy and paste everything almost. All we have to do is change the key. And this time we're not going to the near me map. So we'll just change that to near me and we'll do the same for the actual route name. Save that, press this button. And then if we press the map button, we can see that we're going to the map, list to the list, press this a few more times. And regardless of what map, what screen we're on, if I press this back arrow, we always keep that navigation state consistent. So when we go back, uh, regardless of how deeply nested this is, we're always keeping a consistent and predictable navigation state.